Whoa, what's up dudes and dudettes, man? It's me, your favorite rock dude, Shad Rock. Not really, kids. It's actually me, Pastor Young, and I'm here with another Salvation Short. This is not telling stories about these random people in the Bible, but a story about you, your story about how you are saved. And so that's what we've been talking about, right? How do I know if I'm saved? Why do I need to be saved? What are the steps to being saved? Let's review really quickly, okay? Remember that step number one is I've got to repent. What does that mean to, be, to repent? It means I've got to tell God I'm sorry for the things I've done. It means I've got to confess the things that I've done wrong. And it means I've got to decide that I am walking away from the things I've done wrong and I am not going to do those things ever again. Try my best not to. Part number two to being, sal uh, to being saved is you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, right? Because your soul needs a bath. And only the blood of Jesus can wash away all of our sins and, and, and make us pure and clean and white as snow. And it's as if those sins never even happened. And then last time we talked about the third thing that you've got to do. Repent, be baptized, and number three is be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, last lesson, I talked about what the Holy Ghost actually is, right? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit that lived on the inside of the body of Jesus, being that He was God robed in flesh, God in human form. And whenever we want the Holy Ghost or get the Holy Ghost, that means that the same Spirit that was inside the body of Jesus now that same Spirit comes into our bodies to give us power so that we can live a better life, to give us power so that we can forgive, and, and to give us power so that we can pray for people and they're healed and pray for family members and they're set free. That's what the Holy Ghost does for you. It's more even than just what saves you. But we got to make sure that we're saved, right? Now I told you about what the Holy Ghost is, but now let's talk about how we receive the Holy Ghost. Now listen, kids, this experience might be different for every person, okay? So if Pastor Young talks to you, you know, and, and yours maybe went in a different order, or if you felt something a little different, or some of you cried, some of you didn't cry, that's okay, all right? But I am going to talk to you about kind of the basics of how do I receive the Holy Ghost, because it's one thing to want it, it's a whole other thing to get it, okay? So... Whenever I received the Holy Ghost, this is what happened for Pastor Young, okay? I was in the prayer room, and I was eight years old, and I was walking back and forth, and I was praying, and I told Jesus, I said, Jesus, I love you so much, and I told him, I want the Holy Ghost, because that's important, kids. You need to tell the Lord that you want the Holy Ghost. You need to pray for the Holy Ghost, but here's the thing. You don't have to spend your time begging God for the Holy Ghost because He responds to worship. He responds to love. He doesn't respond to begging because you don't have to beg. You know why? You're not a beggar. You're His child. And so He wants to give you. The Bible says, don't you know that a parent gives good gifts to their children? And so the Lord wants to give you the Holy Ghost. You don't have to beg Him for it. You know what you need to do? You close your eyes, you pull your head back, you raise your hands, and you begin to love on Jesus, okay? Now, what does it mean to love on Jesus? Listen, it can't just be things that you're repeating that you heard somebody else say. You know, you, somebody is saying, I love you, Jesus, so you, you look around and you say, um, hmm, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. That's not going to get it, kids. It's got to be from your heart because whenever the Bible said deep cries out to deep, that means the depths of my heart cries to the depths of your heart. That's whenever the Lord comes running. That's whenever you feel what you feel, the, those chills that maybe you get, or maybe the goosebumps that you get, or just sometimes it's like a, a warm hug. It's something that it's really hard for us to explain what we feel but you know when you feel it. And whenever you feel that, okay, 
that means that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, has responded to the worship, to the love that you've given Him. And so you can say, I thank you, Jesus, or I love you, Jesus, or God, you're the greatest, or you mean so much to me, or my soul loves you, or whatever it is, it's got to come from your heart. And whenever it comes from your heart, the Spirit will come to your heart. And then, kids, whenever you feel the Holy Ghost over you, when you feel those goosebumps or the tingles or the, 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 that warm hug or whatever it is that you feel, you know it's God, guess what? All you've got to do is let Him take over your tongue. Now, Pastor Young, what does that mean? We've heard some people say, come on and yield your tongue. That's hard to understand. What in the world does that mean? And we've had, we've had people that have said, hold on, hold on. We've had other people say, let go, let go. Can I make it really simple for you? Whenever you feel the Spirit of God come over you, whenever somebody says yield your tongue or submit your tongue, all that really means is relax your tongue. And then whenever God begins to speak through you, it will be in words that you don't understand. That's called speaking in an unknown tongue. And that's proof that the Spirit of God has filled you up. It will not be English. And who knows what it's going to sound like. It may sound like Spanish. It may sound like Chinese. It may sound like baby talk at first. That's okay. It's the Spirit speaking through you in words that you don't understand. And so, kids, how do you receive the Holy Ghost? You've got to, you need to close your eyes, pull your head back, raise your hands, and then don't beg Him, start loving on Him and worshiping Him, not just from your head, from your heart. If the tears begin to flow, let them flow. If you begin to cry, go ahead and cry because that's just me being real between me and God. And whenever your heart cries to His heart, His Spirit will come to your heart. And then next thing you know, when you feel that, that Holy Ghost, when you feel that, that, that holy hug from the Lord and you feel His presence, all you've got to do is yield your tongue. And that means just relax your tongue and let the Lord speak through you in words that you do not understand. Kids, I know that many of you are just a few steps away from, from being saved, okay? And so remember, let's take it from start to finish. What do I got to do? Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2 and 38, repent, step one, be baptized in the name of Jesus, step two, and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's step three. And whenever you've done these three things, that means that you have been born again of water and spirit and you have entered into the kingdom of God. Congratulations, and I am so excited for every one of you that is going to receive this so precious and special gift. I'll see you next time.